The following is a conversation with Imre and Marne van Opstal. Imre and Marne are international choreographers, movement directors, and performing artists with an impressive number of achievements in their careers. As dancers, they enjoyed successful and prominent careers in Netherlands Tanztheater 1 and 2 and Bacheva Dance Company. Most importantly, however, they are siblings. Having decided to pursue their own creativity and form a creative duo together, they delved into the world of choreography and have found international acclaim for their work. They've created on companies such as NDT 1 and 2, Rambert Dance Company, National Theater Mannheim, and the Hessisches Staatsballett. I was fortunate enough to be part of their new creation, I'm Afraid to Forget Your Smile, tickets for which can be purchased on the website of the Hessisches Staatstheater. They've collaborated with a great variety of artists and brands on multidisciplinary projects, such as Dior, Amos Bental, Tom Visser, and Paco Rabanne, to name but a few. They've also been featured in newspapers and magazines such as Vogue, The Wall Street Journal, Purple Magazine, Dance Magazine, and many more. But besides all these impressive achievements, they are two wonderfully enthusiastic, passionate, and humorous people, whom I have grown very fond of during our shared time. I must apologize for the quality of the audio in this interview, as the room in which I recorded it wasn't ideal, but I hope you will enjoy my conversation with them nonetheless. Thank you very much, Indra Marne, for doing this. I would like to start by asking how you guys started dancing. Mm, way back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was five. I was five years yeah. old. And uh, I started because my, my oldest sister was already in dance school, since she was four years old. And we had piano classes in the same building. And my piano class would always be uh, done earlier. So I would have to wait like the last 20 minutes for my sister to be done. So I would um, I would sit in the studio watching all the students dance and I was like well, super hyperactive. So I was just like dancing on my chair the whole time. And then the teacher saw that and she's like, hey, why, why don't you try, you know? So I tried and then since then I've been dancing my whole life. I never did anything else actually. Mm. Never did like football or, mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was kind of perfect because I was a like, very active kid. Yeah. And I had a big imagination. So I think it was kind of like those two things coming together really nicely for me. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's kind of how it started. You know? I mean, my, it's kind of the same story. I think I just started a little bit later. I think I was six or seven. Mm. I was also taking piano classes and I was horse riding. But I was always kind of like more like the kid. Playing on the street, I was really good in gymnastics and um, um, athletic. Yeah, athlete, not gymnastics itself, like athletic stuff more, like in ball, ball sports, soccer, tennis. Right, right, right. Um, and I guess I was also looking for something more active, to doing something more with my body. Yeah. And then I kind of mm. happened to be in the same, yeah, also in the same building, looking at my siblings dancing, and also, yeah. Right, because you guys are how many siblings? Four. Four. Total, yeah. And you're all four dancers yes, also, right? Yeah. yeah. It all happened in yeah. the same way, like yeah. looking at each other and moving on the side of the room. Because as kids, I think we don't really think we, we hear music and we want to move. Totally. Right? Yeah. Most kids, at least. Yeah, but that's, I think, is yeah. the interesting part is that yeah. not every kid has this, actually. I'm mm. realizing now my sister is seeing that, too. It's like she has two kids and mm. yeah. super active. Mm. Yeah. Kind of also little theater kids, I feel. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she realizes now comparing her kids to other kids that of her close friends, that she's like, no, our kids are different. Like, right, right, right. Very yeah. active, very, very quick learning. Yeah. Fine motoric stuff. Um, mm. Like understanding their body really quickly. Yeah. Mm. Singing to music. Uh, yeah, you know, really, like. Yeah. It's, it's like my brother and I yeah. completely different. I am. Yeah, I am. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was always like super intelligent, very like book mm. um, focused, yeah. and I was much more like. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah. 
yeah it is very interesting so i guess yeah. it is in your nature somewhere mm, you know yeah. what i mean mm, yeah. but then of course nurture was a huge part of that too i think the fact that we were all dancing and also that our parents were so supportive and allowed us to to just satisfy this need that we had and they were just driving us around everywhere super involved with the school performances right. building the sets for the school like they were so so in it you that's know? it's so yeah refreshing yeah. but i think it's, it's also it's, it's, it's interesting because for me and sometimes what i'm thinking about is like why i chose dance because it could have been doing easily something else mm. because i was good in a lot of stuff like sports wise in a way I think also, I think dance also just there's a deeper understanding and a deeper level. Also, on an emotional level, you're more. Mm. I don't know. It's uh, like sports. Like sports is more like a competition feeling, wanting to win something. Mm -hmm. And I think I feel like dance is more like. It's also much more community. More, yeah, community, and you do it for yourself, and it's not like it's not about gaming or. I mean, the creativity really sets yeah, apart. It's yeah. Like, obviously, it's yeah. Obviously, yeah. It's an art form. Um, but I think yeah. as kids, you 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 don't you're not so aware of that. No, 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 you start with little games. Totally. Right? Course, it's not yeah. even dance. Totally. You know it's, what I mean? It's, it's games. It's yeah. games and, totally. But yeah. what they do do is they work a lot with imagination. Yeah. yeah. But then they hear a, a glass of hot cocoa or whatever. You know, hot chocolate milk. Yeah. It's like already there. They're they're kind of. Yeah. I that that is one thing about dance that I love. Mm. is like how imagination can be a shortcut for the body to understand mm. yeah because at the end of the day all like all the things that are happening are, are very physical mm. but if you can imagine uh, a quality mm. something that exists in nature and you yeah. try to imitate it totally. it's gonna just Change completely it. transform yeah. you yeah yeah yeah. And all, all that's happening is just information going down and up you know? so yeah. yeah i love that so much yeah um, and how has your, like your change of becoming choreographers influenced how you perceive dance hmm. and your role in it also? I must say I was always, I don't know, when you're working with choreographers, I was always also quite the active one in mm. wanting to create. Mm. I was really with the choreographer also thinking with them, coming with solutions even. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Always listening. Always listening. Yeah. Yeah. Always trying to understand their reasoning, trying to yeah. understand their process. Yeah. Uh, paying attention to the technical parts of it. Um, so you're already creating with them yeah. in a yeah. sense or in a way, of course. It's, it's their work. Yeah. But I think I think the interest yeah. for creation is already there. Yeah. But I think now, I mean you know, we're kind of ruined in a way that <laughs> We've done a lot. We've seen so much. It's like it's hard now to be completely uh, objective. I I think it's it's it is impossible, and I think that's okay. You know what mm, I mean? Of course. Like we're never going to see our own performances like a person right. that is going to just come in and see the show. Like right. we have no clue mm. really what they're going through. Mm. Um, but I think if we stay close to what we think is interesting, then hopefully we can we can we can in return kind of give it to them, and they, yeah, they'll take course. from it what they can. Honestly, I mean, hundred percent. It's like there's no point in trying to create for for an for the audience a mystery audience, no? Yes, yes. of course. Because, yes. You see, like what you like, and it's yeah. like, oh, I I would like this to happen yeah. now. Yeah. And something now that you were saying about listening to the choreographer, what mm. what they pay attention to, what I have loved is that you guys are very attentive about earning things. I love that you spoke in those terms because it's mm. true. A show can't do whatever. Mm. Yeah. You have to, the natural right. cadences and rhythms yeah. are very important and it's good. It's mm. so nice that, to hear you voice that. Mm. It's like, oh, trying to sponge that all up, you know, yeah. because it's it's super worthwhile information. Yeah. Also... We cannot, this is also funny because we cannot really explain dynamics. Absolutely, yeah. Even, yeah, if, yeah. You, even if you don't, you know, it's something that we feel from the inside. It's mm -hmm. not, you cannot explain why something necessarily, how long something needs to take for you, before you need to cut it, or why it, it's just like this internal clock almost, knowing mm -hmm. that now you want to stretch it, now it needs to be cut, now it needs to go slow, now it needs to be fast, building up to certain parts, and it's, it's purely dynamics in a way. Even if you don't understand the show whatsoever, people feel dynamics in the end. 
It's very what makes intuitive, the show. No? intuitive feeling. Yeah, but yeah. apart from that, it's also there's a certain emotional tension often yeah. that you are building. And if you want to have a scene that has a specific kind of quality or some kind of cathartic release or yeah. maybe something that holds really strong or whatever it is that you want to do, then you need to work to that without, otherwise it just yeah. falls flat. You mm-hmm. didn't earn it and then it's drama for what? You know yeah. what I mean? It's almost like cutting to the last pages of a book. It's like, why yeah. would you do that? Of course. In between, you know, yeah. it's it's like you have to you have to earn it's that fun. ending. Yeah. yeah. The connection the yeah. connection is severed then. Yeah. No? Sorry, so I also cut you just before no, no, no. you wanted to say something. No no no. Yeah. Uh, it was really interesting what you said, but a hundred percent it's this intuitive feeling of mm. Just somehow you can't explain it, yeah. but it, that has to happen in this moment. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and I feel for then seeing you guys do that, I also in my dancing for this piece, um, I get to think, okay, in my dancing parts, the natural rhythms of the whole piece are can be condensed into like a solo moment, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they also have to be there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's all yeah. these layers, mm. layers, yeah. layers, layers, you know. It's in the first place through your own experience, then it's your experience within the, sometimes with your dance partner, sometimes within the section, that section within the piece and the piece within the evening. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's just layering. It's, it's breath, it's rhythm, yeah. it's, uh, it's air, it's, mm, yeah. 100%. Yeah. What is it like for you to create as a duo where you can bounce off of each other and you can feel like you each bring your thing, but it's like you have two brains mm. Mm. where you can actually bring more than you would otherwise, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I, I mean, mean first of all, yeah. I mean, how how we, first how of we do all, it's nice to have dialogue with someone. Yeah. Um, you know, can you imagine having to do this all by yourself? Mm. Which, of course, a lot of people do, mm. but at this, I think... If you have a relationship with someone, and it's of course gold when you find it, to have this creative partnership, yeah, then it's just it's just it's, it's much it's, more yeah, rich. It's so lucky and it's super lucky. Yeah, so, you know, of course. I think creating art sometimes, or creating art sounds really so pretentious, but <laughs> it is kind of narcissistic. There's something quite narcissistic <laughs> right, right, about it. Right. In the first place, as a dancer, you're just so obsessed with yourself. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then also as a creator. You have to believe in what you're doing. Mm. You have to stand by what you're doing. Because otherwise you will never make a single step without doubting yourself all the time. But there's something about being with two people that sometimes cuts through that a little bit. Yeah. Where we already have to let go of stuff. Mm. We already have to stay flexible because we have our own ideas. Yeah. You know? And something I like this a lot, it keeps you a little bit more grounded, I feel. Yeah. Um also, not to only get married to your own, yeah, exactly. also see things from a different perspective. So it's like, oh yeah, actually, yeah, this Absolutely. also could work. It's like, why not? Let's do this. Yeah. You know, so yeah. keeping it, uh, keeping the windows open. And, and this is why we also like to be so involved with the dancers as well, and having that relationship in the studio with them, because in the end, it's teamwork. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been yeah. so nice, like you guys just offering. A lot, you know, and it's mm. it's what we were saying before. It invites to give back a lot, mm. um, and also to realize. I realize in the studio, oh, it's entirely up to me to do my own work. Mm. Yeah. It's so nice to feel that trust. Like I, that's not common. Uh, at yeah. least I haven't felt it many times, and it's really cool to feel like, oh, the work is in my own hands. Holy shit! Mm. It's yeah. kind of a, a, a relief, and a kind of okay, I have to start doing it now. Yeah, because we believe that you, that's also maybe why we work with smaller groups. We and we enjoyed this so much as dancers. We believe in giving everyone the responsibility of the work. You know? Everyone needs to understand their role in the work, but also carry carry the role in a way. And the best way to do that is by personalizing it, by making it identifiable for mm-hmm. yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. That it feels like that's me. That's my part. This is what I've given to the the process without me this piece would have been completely different yeah. there's something i always felt yeah. like as a dancer that was super nice to feel like oh it matters what i do in the 
bigger scheme of it. Yeah, you know, of course. Mm. It's like I'm not just replaceable. You're not replaceable. Or you can't just take my part out. You know what I mean? Um, and that's great. I mean, with this specific piece, it's like six people. Yeah, like that's it. Mm. <laughs> it's yeah, you carry a big part of your responsibility for half an yeah. hour. You know, yeah. it's. Um, yeah. yeah, every one of you has to carry their part, you know. I think that's so beautiful. It's so, it's so nice. Yeah. But also, you deserve that, you know. And finally, what to you guys is the purpose of dance? Wow, well, big question. Yeah, it's huh? a very, very big question. For me, it's connecting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Connection. Mm-hmm. I think this is the whole thing, you know, we chose to dance as a profession, you know, we eventually got a job and are making money with it. But, you know, we're all born with a body to move. So I also believe that everyone should be dancing. We have been doing that for lifetimes already. It's like singing. We've been using our voice and our body to express and to connect. And these have been traditions and rituals and, and prayers and so many other things that, yeah, movement with the body is... It's, I mean, a super raw it's, form of expression, and the yeah. body doesn't lie. And I think no. we, all, yeah. we all know this. It's yeah. like there is this unspoken language that's being spoken constantly between people, yeah. which is body language, which yeah. in itself is movement. So we're constantly communicating anyway. Yeah. That's why I think connecting for me is is the main thing. Yeah. It's like, again, the onion thing, connecting with each other, connecting with the dancers, dancers connecting with the piece, the piece connecting with the audience, hopefully. And in the end, you just hope maybe you've shifted something or reminded people of their, I don't know, humanity or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. But also, also, it's also nice, but also, <laughs> yeah, no, it is, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, especially with dance, it's not, we don't put dance on the wall, like a painting anyway, so it's also, it's there and then it's not there anymore. Yeah. And I think that's it's also the like the beautiful thing about dance that it's, you can't really, you can't really capture it. Yeah. It's really a moment in time. For time to stand still for a second, maybe also where people mm-hmm. can just forget about everything in their lives and then maybe look at people moving. I mean, hopefully that's what it does, yeah. So just and both for the performer as and for, for the, the audience. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just really that's why it's this connection, that. no? It's yeah, this. but it's also an energetic connection. Yeah. It's, uh, it's yeah, being in this bubble where it's nothing a, yeah. exists and everything exists. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a uh, works. Like, we like it works. It works. So. <laughs> It's a yeah. good place to wrap up. Thank you so much Thank for doing you. it.